quick tap will just get rid of everything. One of my biggest gripes with my MIDI setup until recently was that I couldn't figure out how to set up a tap tempo. Obviously you can tap in a tempo to your Ableton session, but then you're changing the global tempo. And there are many reasons why you might not wanna do that. So I built a Max for Live plugin that controls Echo and it allows you to tap out a tempo among many other fun features. And I have it all mapped out here on my MIDI fighter twister to just these four knobs. So let's dive in and take a look at how it works. Here's my session tempo. You can hear that click, right? So, you know, I could tap out a tempo to match it. One, two, three, four. Great. What if I wanted to do triplets? Okay. Triplet. Okay. What if I wanted to do something totally erratic and off the grid? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? Totally off the grid. Didn't have to change a thing in the global tempo. Say I'm running tracks, whatever I'm doing, it goes unaltered and I can have fun with my little analog experience in this southwest corner of my MIDI fighter twister. So let's take a dive in and see what's going on. On the MIDI fighter twister, every knob functions as a knob, obviously, but also as a button. So if effectively I have eight uh, controllers within these four knobs. And the first thing I wanna do is just show you what each one does. The uh, upper left one here is the on off indicated by the green and the red. So the delay is off, we get nothing. Delay is on, we get delay. No surprise there. Okay, you might have guessed this one's feedback. I guess I'll demonstrate that to you now since I just used it. So at the bottom, we get minimal feedback. And at the top, we get maximal feedback. Now, oftentimes feedback gets a little crazy. So if you just tap it once, you clear the chain. But check it out, it's pretty cool. Even though it's just one button, if you hold it, say you're at no feedback. Well, if you hold it, you can slam the feedback effectively, pushing it up to 150% so that you're gonna get immediate distortion. I mean, you could slow down the time here. And give it a chance to build, I'll speed it up a little bit. But eventually it's gonna get crazy. And as soon as you let go, if your feedback is turned down, it's gonna stop. Or you can just tap it and it's gone. Now the tap tempo knob is up here on the upper right. Now you actually only need about three taps to get a tempo. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Right, you get the idea. And if we move this knob to the left, I have it set up in my MIDI fighter twister to be, I think in, in what's called detente mode, which means that the center is gonna kind of snap to that pink um, color there. And that means it's dead center. And if we move to the right, well, then we're getting a low pass, or sorry, a high pass filter on the delay. And if we move it to the left, we're getting a low pass filter. Right? So that's what that knob does. And now on the lower left, we have time and repitch. So if we move this knob without holding it down, we can change the delay much like a digital delay, where pitches are maintained, but they're kind of morphed to fit whatever the grid or the tapped out tempo is. Well, actually in this case, it's not tapped. It's being modulated by the knob. So whatever, the changing tempo, everything is just kind of forced to fit into that box. You know how it works. But if we hold it and move it at the same time, then we get repitch mode, which is great for creating all sorts of crazy effects. So that is a walkthrough of what the four buttons and knobs do. And now I wanna show you how they work within the set here. So this is the crux of the plugin. This is Echo Control by Ableton. And basically, when you get this session, it should all be mapped out. And what you need to do is just map everything in the purple. So you map the tempo knob to the tap tempo button. You map the time value to this twisty time knob here. Uh, whoops, you map the feedback to the feedback knob you map the feedback slam to the feedback slam button, and you map the filter to the low pass, high pass um, on whatever you're gonna use. Now this could be eight different controllers for you, or maybe you also have a MIDI fighter twister. 
whatever it is, um, there are those things you need to map here. And then using these black buttons, you'll map those to these macros. And those will automatically control everything within Echo. Now down here, there's a few more things you need to map. So on off is the switch. So we're going to map that here. On and off. Time and sync, you can map if you want, but I don't have it mapped on my end. I'll show you what that does a little later. Uh, delay volume, I have mapped here to the same knob as the on off. And repitch, I have mapped here to this button. Right, which is a toggle. So when I hold it, it's on, and when I let go, it's off. Once you do that, everything will work as desired. So the on, off, and volume, let's start there. This basically controls the volume of the delay. So let's turn it on. And notice that when it's all the way up, the delay is quite loud, and when it's all the way down, the delay is quite soft. Now at the very top, you'll notice that the input signal, and I'm gonna change my time to be a little long so you can tell that there's a difference here. The input signal is muted when you turn it all the way up. But if you turn off the delay, you get your input signal back no matter where you are. So at the very top, you can mute the input signal with the delay activated. And this is great for creating just a delay effect. All right, so there it is with the high pass, uh, yeah, high pass filter up. That always confuses me. There it is with the low pass filter. Um, so that's the gist there. Um, what's kind of fun is to turn it all the way down, but turn your feedback all the way up. And maybe turn your time so you get kind of like a quick build here. But you're gonna hear the delay start to go kind of crazy but it's at a nice low volume. So it's, you know, it's getting kind of crazy now, so I might turn the feedback down a little bit, or I might just tap to clear it. Um, but that's kind of a fun way to play like luscious pads, but have a little bit of chaos in the background. Uh, perhaps you would want to map your reverb to something if you had an additional controller. And then that way, if you did the same effect, You get like a little bit of a gentler feedback craziness because it's you know passing through a reverb. Um, but again, same idea. That's with the volume all the way down. Now with the volume all the way up, it's probably going to be a little untenable. Yeah. So let's clear that and get rid of that. Moving right along. So that's I think all I want to talk about with the on off and volume. Let's talk about the time versus sync uh, button here. So this is not something I have mapped to a controller. Um, but when it's to the left, or in position zero, you're working with tap tempo. All right, I'm going to bring my reverb back down. So that's tap tempo, but if we turn on our time and sync, you'll notice that it's moving this stuff here. So we turn it on, and we've got 0, 0.0, 0, 0, meaning there's going to be no drift. And um, if we change our time knob now, we can go from 16th notes all the way up to whole notes. So if I turn on the click, right? Every four beats, we get a recycle. And if we turn it all the way down, we get 16ths. OK, so I'm going to turn the click off now. Now, what's cool about that is that you can still play around with this, say with, uh, where is it at, quarter notes. And you can get these glitchy effects by using repitch. Oh, it's too fast. Oh, I need more feedback, that's what it is. Right, so I'm still getting that repitch effect, but I'm not losing any sense of the grid. So that's a case where it is kind of fun to turn off the tap tempo and just go into sync mode. And you can do that by doing that there. All right, so let's talk about the feedback slam. I'm gonna maybe turn on a little synth here. Right, so feedback in kind of the middle is gonna naturally fade away and maybe I'll turn down the, the delay signal a little bit. But if we hold this button, it's gonna get crazy. And you can either just let go by turning the feedback all the way down, 
or even if the feedback is all the way up, a quick tap will just get rid of everything. So there's a couple ways to have fun with that. Um, you can just, you can leave your feedback all the way down so that you have kind of a light delay, but then you can just slam it. And as soon as you let go, it's gonna die off. Right, and I could run this through a low pass filter to make it a little gentler on the ears. But the thing is when you filter it, you're not giving the feedback as much information, so it's not gonna get as crazy. And sometimes it won't even um, kind of like go as nuts as you want it to. So that's a little trick with the filters there. All right, so this is kind of a fun one. We're gonna turn feedback all the way up. We're gonna hold feedback slam, and then we're gonna mess with repitch, and we're gonna mess with filter, and I'm gonna hold a note with the sustain pedal. And you know what? I'm going to turn my delay volume all the way up to mute the input signal. So now we're just hearing the delay. And through all this modulation, I'm never letting the feedback get all that crazy because the filter is effectively cutting out the information that's required for it to go totally nuts. All right, so we just get these kind of interesting textures. And if it does get crazy, we just tap it and we clear it out, turn it down and move on to the next thing. So before I wrap up, I just wanna maybe give you a walkthrough of the plugin itself since I've been doing a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, effectively, when you get it, everything should be mapped, but if it's not, you'll see you know blank macros and basically you click map to time and you click time. You click map to feedback and you click feedback. Map to low pass, click low pass, map to high pass, click high pass, map to clear, hit clear. And then you map these uh, settings as we did in the beginning. And everything should work. It's all set up through macro mapping. As you can see, this is mapped to time, right? Uh, repitch is mapped to repitch. Uh, this is mapped to, what is it? Time and sync, right? So everything is already good to go. It's all mapped back to those macros. So once you set up those mappings, you're set. Now, I just wanna briefly mention the secret sauce to the tap tempo. So here it says, time must be macro mapped 40 milliseconds to two seconds. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. And basically what I did is I created a table of values for all 127 spots on a knob that correspond to that exact macro mapping. So I kind of reverse engineered it. And what this means is if we look at the macro maps here, um, open that up time is ranging from 40 milliseconds to two seconds. If this were any different, your tap tempo just wouldn't match. Basically what it's doing is it's finding the nearest value of 127 different values that corresponds to your tempo. So it's actually not perfect. It's quite approximate, um, but I figured no one needs to go faster than 40 milliseconds and rarely do you wanna go fast, uh, slower than two seconds. So within that time frame, you can tap out anything and it's gonna be pretty darn close. Um, that's kind of the secret to how it works. And the rest is just all done through some, you know, kind of creative MIDI mapping and uh, Max for Live. So my name's Devin. Thanks for watching. This is Able Toots, Echo Control. Super sweet plugin to control what is arguably one of my favorite delay plugins in Ableton. And this takes it out of the box and puts it onto hardware controls, which means you can have a lot more fun than wiggling your mouse and your keyboard, right? You can really control it with your hands and explore all sorts of sonic possibilities. So enjoy.